for the reefers I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video I'm going to dedicate it to the Tubonaria coral. It's an SPS coral. I already went ahead and I glued it to the middle section of the tank. I did some research on it and I'm going to talk about it, the care requirements and so on. And also on this video, when I start the video, I'm first going to talk about the final observation of the dino flatulates where it's at. Be, uh, be honest with you, I'd say about it's like 70 or 80 percent gone. But before we start the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and smash that notification bell. So let's take a deep dive into it and check it out. Hold on. Okay, so as promised, the first thing that I'm going to do uh, is the final uh, update on the dino flatulates. Okay, what you're looking at now, uh, what I use as a guide is that I check the dinos at the same time during the day when the you know my life schedule is is fully up to par and uh, i would see uh, how it's progressing well as you notice if you look at the previous videos it, it's doing phenomenal uh, now what i'm going to do although it says that you can go up you know it might take like six to eight weeks and even longer depending on your results you know uh, how much you want to get rid of the dinos I decided that I'm going to continue to use the uh, product even further out. As you notice, it has dissipated a lot. I put it daily uh, when it comes to the light schedule. Since I see that it's all, the bacteria is overpowering it, I've already raised my lights a little bit. I, I brought them down to 40%. So I brought them up now. They're at 49%. I decided I'm going to actually keep them there. The temperature, I'm still shooting uh, around 80. I haven't brought it down to 77 or 78. So more or less during the day, I'm keeping it at 80. But other than that, as you see, uh, the Microbacter Clean is doing great. What I'm planning on doing is probably also uh, introducing the Microbacter 7. Now, why? Well, if you follow me on the previous videos when it came to dinos, these two uh, products, Micro, Microbacter 7 and Microbacter Clean, the core bacteria are the same, but one and the other, uh, like let's say Clean versus 7, that's when they differentiate. So uh, you, have, uh, you have the core bacteria on both of them. But then the difference between seven and clean is that there's another spectrum of bacteria, shall we call it, that is also introduced into the tank. So what I, what I hope I'm not confusing people out there. But what I'm trying to say is to get the complete, complete broad spectrum of bacteria, the ideal thing would be to actually use them both. To use Microbacter Clean one day and then you have to wait 12 hours and then use Microbacter 7. So you would get the whole range of bacteria found on these two products and not concentrated on one product. Now, I haven't made the decision yet because as you notice, it's doing great. Uh, it's actually uh, attacking the issue and everything looks fantastic. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the camera and I'm going to talk about the, uh, the uh, coral that we're going to talk about today. So hold on one second. Okay, so here we are in front of the coral. As uh, a matter of fact, uh, the other coral on the side of the Cinellaria, I had to move it with the um, feeder that, that I have because it was, you know, waving on the front and all that. So you guys get an exact um focused on the actual core well first of all to start off of course these are considered an sps coral there's debate some people say it's an lps others say it's sps but by the looks of it and the research that i did is definitely an sps coral now uh they are found very widely across the indo-pacific ocean from the red sea to japan and the Great Barrier Reef, including going towards Tonga. Now, this coral is known by several common names, including 
include squirrel coral, cup coral, which is the most common name that I'm aware of that I've been exposed to for years and years, vase coral, pagoda coral, disc coral, and ruffled ridge coral. Now, they are what they call zooxanthellati, and therefore occur only in relative shallow sunlit waters. Not knowing that, uh, so far what I've thrown out there to all of you guys, then of course now moving it to the reef aquarium hobby, the environment. The placement of these corals, I believe, should be between middle and upper level uh, of your water. This one, as we speak, it's in the middle level of the actual tank. And then the water flow should really be moderate, not low, but actually moderate. Now, why do I say that? Because this, although it's a, a frag of the actual coral, which it's actually like a cup-shaped coral, but what happens is if, if you get detritus inside the middle of the coral, it can actually cause like a, a little spot and it might cause like some, some kind of a bacteria and will probably affect that little area. So that's why you need moderate water flow. Now when it comes to feeding, these corals really, you shouldn't, you really don't need to go out of your way to actually feed the type of corals. But if you want to, I would say powdery foods like reefoids would be ideal to feed the actual coral. Now, uh, when it comes to the hardiness of this coral, they are considered a hardy coral, which will adapt to different lighting and flow conditions. What I'll be doing with this coral, I've had it already, I'd say about close to a month. What I'll be doing with this coral is like every, you know, I'm on top of this tank almost every day um, in front of the tank and I check it. But what you can do is like every other day, if you see something just like, let's say with, with a turkey baser, just blow it. If you see a little detritus or something, blow it. Uh, blow the coral so you try not to have any detritus or any little sand particles or something within the uh, coral. Other than that, uh, good water flow will do the actual trick. And then finally, because the polyps are only grown on one side, mounting this coral uh, can easily be done to your uh, rock work, either with uh, putty, which is what I actually use, or uh, glue, uh, coral glue. Well, that's it. I hope you found the video interesting, educational, and fun. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash that notification bell. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thanks for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.